Hi, this is James Zapp at the Dapper Den Barbershop in Richfield, Connecticut, and today we have Law. How's it going? All right, Law, what are we doing today? Well, been here, probably haven't been here in about two months. Give or take, yeah. So this is really kind of really getting bushy here. So it's coming into summer. I want to bring it down, yep. maybe about halfway okay. all around. Again, uh, keeping the mustache, trim it up a bit, make it look a little bit better because it's you just don't getting really like the walrus thing. No, it's much. just getting into everything. You know, it's a pain in the ass. You drink a yeah. pint, and it's just everywhere. Okay, you know, cool. uh, that as far as the hair, mm -hmm. you know, we'll fade this up real tight. Hopefully, with like a a, a hard part here. Okay. You know, okay. slowly. You know, I'm prior military, so I like a like a high and tight. But with the hard part is nice, and this is a little bit shorter here. Yep. You know, still to be able to kind of come over to the side. I don't put it back like yours. Yeah. So you kind of so, want, but in terms of like length, you kind yep, of yep, exactly, like mine exactly. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah. You know, give me a little shorter. You know, that's you can easy. go like a, a, a one or. Yeah. All right. You know? So we can do that. Awesome. Cool. And that's really about it. Let's take, what are we gonna do with the uh, the handlebar mustache? Do you want to keep that? Uh, I do want to keep it. Uh, you know, I do like. I just think it needs to come in. I'm not looking for some big swooping thing. I just like a little touch of it. You know, trim up the mustache a bit so it's just maybe at the lip or a little below it, just yep. not into everything I eat, and then kind of taper everything in. I mean, we could probably take a good half Tape. inch or something off okay, of that. Yeah, maybe it's we'll long. see how it looks when the beard comes out, but I'd rather have that. I wouldn't mind the mustache and the, you know, the, everything else being a little bit bushier uh, than than the beard itself, you know, so it kind of yeah. stands out on its own. Awesome. Cool. So that way, if I didn't twist it up, it does look distinct and it kind of sits on top and doesn't yeah. get lost in all this shag. Yeah. Okay, cool. I thought you were going to say. No, that too. Depending on who you're talking to. <laughs> so we're gonna do a hard part up on the top right now. So I'm gonna put a red speedo guide clip. And somebody asked in the comments last time what clipper I was using. This is a uh, it's a wall clipper 100th anniversary. It's essentially just the senior, but they just did a new anniversary for it. It's a little bit heavier too. So if you don't like a heavy clipper, I probably wouldn't use this. But so I got my red speedo guide clip on. I'm gonna disinfect away from you so you're not inhaling any of this stuff. So for a hard part, you, you've had a hard part. You had a hard part last time, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So this is easy for me to start a hard part now because it's already there. The part is established. But if you're not, if you're doing a hard part for the first time, what you need to do is find a natural part uh, that it's going to start. And the way to do that, in case you're wondering, in case they didn't have one, is you comb it all the way back. And this is a perfect example. You see how this hair wants to go high and it wants to go that way? You just follow the way the hair goes. And that's how you can find your part to start your hard part out. So I'm gonna start with the two just open right now to do this. And I'm gonna run this top clip right here across the part. I was a little cautious, so I go a little closer to the lower hairs first and I kind of work my way up. That's gonna establish. I'm gonna clean up all this later. Just wanna get this started. So I'm gonna close my clip. And I'm just going up, going around with the two right now. You can see the contrast in different of hair, the different sizes or length of hair right now. I'm just gonna kind of open up my clip again and just follow through with that whole part. Go up if I need to, make sure I'm pulling off. Get all that out of the way. Okay, so now we got my red speedo or black speedo guide number one on. And we're just gonna start making our one line right now. This is pretty close to the uh, last video I did with Dave, if you saw that one. If not, I'm sure there'll be a link somewhere where I'm pointing right now that Jack is gonna put in to go see the video I did with Dave. Uh, so we're just establishing our one line right now. Just going back over, checking, make sure I got everything. Right, so now that we did kind of do our one line, you can definitely see the line that I did in that. I can too, because I'm right up close to it. But now I'm gonna open up my clip just a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of go up and just just hit that line and flick off. <laughs> okay, so then we just went up a little bit. So again, we're gonna open up the clipper just a little bit more and just keep working up until we get to that two. Just here at cutting too. And again, I'm flicking off as I'm going up as well. Flipping off. Flipping off. Flipping off. Flipping off. Uh, okay, so now I'm just gonna open up just a little bit more and just keep going with it. And then lastly, big, we're gonna open it up all the way right now. 
Now I'm gonna leave, I always do this. I tend to leave a lot, a lot of bulk up here because I like to hit that with the scissors because I like the way it's gonna grow back later on when I cut into this and take all this stuff off with scissors. So right now I'm gonna open this up. I'm just gonna go up and try to get my tube. It's looking pretty good so far. So the next thing I'm gonna do right now is because this is so short, and he said you like it tight, right? Yep. So I'm gonna actually try to skin, just super low skin, um, or at zero, you'd say. I call that skin. Uh, I'll probably run the uh, pro foil over it just for a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take my clip off, wipe this off real quick. All right, so I'm gonna actually try to, what I said before is I'm gonna try to skin fade this out just a bit, low, low, low. I'm gonna use a zero for it and just kind of run over with the pro foil towards the end. So I have my wall completely closed right now and I'm just gonna go up just a bit here and create a hard line. Get all this out while I'm here. All right, now the same thing as I did with the one, is I'm just opening it up just a little bit. And I'm just gonna kinda hit it just a little bit and then start flicking off as well. And we're not going up that high on that because we're gonna keep it low. Again, open it up just a little bit. I'm also, as you can see, I'm stretching the skin as well when I'm doing this. It's pulling the hairs out. It's gonna leave a nice taper there too. See, we're still we're just kind of creating more and more lines as we're going up, and then we're just getting them away as we move up. And that's why I brought the one up so high because I got a lot of room to work with right now. So now my clip is completely, or my I'm sorry, my uh, clippers are completely open right now. I'm just kind of going up, and I'm kind of feeling for the his occipital bone is right here, but there's like a little bit of a bone right here too that I can feel, and I'm kind of using that to work with my taper as well. And you can see I'm just kind of going up, and then just using his head to create its own taper. Now that's not looking too bad. I'm gonna look in the mirror right now to see my lines and everything like that. Okay, so I know that I looked in the mirror, I checked it in the light and everything. So right now I'm gonna use my uh, wall uh, half guard, whatever you wanna call it. Let me turn it off here. Half guard, 1 16th. This is just a half guard. I'm using it completely open right now. I'm gonna keep going up because I'm gonna try to connect it to that one. And this I'm kind of massaging out. I was using the occipital bone kind of pulling off at the same time. And then what I'm gonna do is I still notice a little bit of dark patches right down there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close it up a little bit and I'm gonna start to scrape. So instead of it being right here, I'm actually gonna turn it this way and I'm gonna start to scrape up with the occipital bone. And I'm using it open or a little bit closed right now because I wanna hear if it's even cutting hair. And I'm gonna keep moving down until I hear it start to hit something. So right there, it's not really hitting anything. I'll move it down just a little bit more. Right there, I can hear a little bit of it cutting. And then move it down just a little bit more. So now we're starting to fade down. And also a big thing about talking about this when you're skinning, when you're doing a skin fade, a skin tape, or anything like that, it's important to keep going up. I like to, I like to fade, I'm sorry, keep going into the fade. I like to work up, then I like to work down, then I work back up again. And it's important to also go tight into the skin. Now it's not hurting you at all, is mm -hmm. it? No, so what I'm, I'm kind of pushing in because I gotta get those hairs. We're talking like, what is this, 1 16th? You know what I mean? We have to go really tight to make sure we get everything because then you don't wind up with any dark patches or anything like that. So I'm gonna start like this. I'm working my way back up, making sure this is a good skin taper at the back. Open it up a little bit. Just here, cutting. And again, I am still flicking off. I'm going a little fast here. I know, but I'm just a little more comfortable with it. We're connecting it to the one right now. So right now I'm gonna do my outlining and uh, I'm using my Andis T outliner. And I'm curious as to, a lot of people talk about, you know, like why do you do your outlining now? Why don't you do it at the end? Uh, this is just the way I work. I like to do my outlining now so I can kind of see how everything's going and I'll start with the beard also with the outlining. Some other barbers that work in the shop too and other barbers that I've talked to, they might do their outlining last. Let me know in the comments what order you do your haircut in. Is your outlining last? Is your outlining uh, right after you do the sides? Is it right after you do the top and before you hit the beard? So let me know what you think about that. So right now I'm gonna start mine right after I do the sides. And Law was telling me before that he does wanna go tight on yeah. the beard a little yeah. bit on the sides. Correct. So I want to, uh, I'm gonna kinda of pull this off to the side and just get all these strays or stragglers, I call them, out of the way. I'm just kinda of going up with the curvature. 
it's a natural thing going around the ear. While I'm here, also try to hit the ear hairs as well. Getting old, Law. Yeah, it's What's going on with it. this, man? It's got a mind of its own. <laughs> it's not as bad. We've seen a lot <laughs> worse, man. Do you like me humming in your ear, Law? Sure. James, who sings this? The mother. Happy <laughs> <be> Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I'd like to know in the comments is that when I'm doing my outlining, you can kind of see how I did it already from the last time Law was here. We like to do uh, rounded backs. Uh, sometimes I'll do a square back. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, do you do rounded backs? Do you do square backs? When do you do a rounded back? And when do you do a square back if you kind of switch between both? Okay, so now we're going to start moving to the top. Just going to wet it up a bit. And I'm going to start with this side right now and get some of the weight of it off. Again, we're using Hori Hanzo. Cheers. So we're going straight up with that. I'm just kind of getting some of the bulk off of it. Just kind of blending it in because I'm going to like the way this is going to grow back. Law has been, how long have you been coming here for? A couple months? Yeah, a couple months. A couple months now. What time is it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I like the way I've been doing it on his hair for a while with the scissor over comb on the sides, getting the bulk off instead of using the clippers. And I just like the way it grows back on him. And now this stuff right here, you can see this is part of his cowlick where it's growing. You can see these hairs starting to stick up here. There's no need for those. Now I could go over them with clippers. I might hit it at the end, but right now I'm just gonna take my scissors and just lightly bring it down to that length. You'll see some of these right here. These are gonna stick up if I don't cut them off, which is when it grows back, it's not gonna look that great. So I'm kind of finding it. You see these hairs right here. Jerry, is that coming through mm -hmm. the camera? You see the hairs are a little bit longer right here. I just want to take those off. Now, I know a lot of people are against cutting the crown off. That's a big, that's a big Oh my thing. God, why don't you use a number six? Yeah, I might. But you can see when this, when this is with this hard part, this is gonna look a lot nicer than if I just left this here because this would have started growing out this way, especially with him in the way his hair grows and after I've been cutting him for a while. So right now we're gonna start working on the top of his head, uh, doing scissor over comb here. And I'm gonna leave a pretty good amount of length on top because I do like the juxtaposition of short to long. I think it's gonna be a nice cut when it comes out towards the end. So I'm just kind of going up and finding my guideline, what I've been doing, and then just kind of keep moving with it. And then again, I'll always kind of kick it over this way for the odd chance that it does for some reason fall this way. It does have a little bit of evenness to it. You can also tell when I'm cutting scissor over comb, I'll leave it like this. I don't like it going straight like this. I like there to be a little bit of an in, or um, a linear wave to this right now. So I'm gonna kind of just let it go from short to long in the back. It's also, this is also a very low maintenance cut. I gave this to you last time I think, Law, yep. right? And you just kind of put the comb in the morning, you just keep it, it over the side, that's it? Yep. Yeah, it's a pretty low maintenance cut. So if you're looking to try a hard part out or even a soft part, uh, look into it. You don't like to do a lot with your hair. That's perfect. So now I'm gonna have him move this way because I'm super short and I'm just gonna cross check it by going against. Just double checking. Okay, so we got the length where we like it right now on the top. So now we're gonna go in with the Hattori Hanzo uh, texturizing shears. You can see that the gap that they have in these shears it's pretty much a point cut. We talked about this in the last video, and these shears are fantastic for trying to blend hair up on the top. So you just take it, just do a couple snips, and it just falls extremely nicely. I'm always just kind of going up, just, get, just getting a tip so everything just blends in just a little bit. I'm not taking any bulk. If you wanted to, you could dry out the hair and pull it up like this, and then go into the hair like this and thin it out as well. That'd be really nice. So another technique that you can use with these scissors is you can actually point cut with them and it'll give the hair a nice texture because it's all going to be different lengths and stuff and it's going to blend very, very nicely. So you take the hair up and you'll actually start to point cut with that. I'm just doing the tips right now. But when you're doing this, because you're not going flat like this and you're going like this, the hair is going to be all sorts of different angles. 
especially in the front, that's gonna fall really nice. All right, so before we continue with the beard, I'm gonna finish up the hair. I went back, I cut off some of the straggle bit things I did with the hard part right now, cleaned up the cowlick a bit, went back over some stuff with thinning shears, and now I'm gonna start the hard part. So I'm gonna take my T-liner right now, I'm gonna have to move your head just towards me a bit, and I'm just gonna go against this line and get myself a base for it. So the thing I like to do with hard parts, I like to make it super thin first. And then I hit it with a blade to give it a nice, sharp, sharp edge to it. So now we're gonna take some shaving gel. Are you and sure that's shaving gel? <laughs> <laughs> Could be anything. And we're just gonna follow the line that we did right now. Very, very little bit at a time. All right, so we're just gonna go down against the grain like this with a clip. It's taking off some good length. This is just going to help me when I have to blend it in. Because he doesn't want like about half of this off. Always be careful of the mustache. And something we're going to get into with Law's beard is that he's got some crazy, crazy cow licks under here. Which the weight right now of the beard is helping out. So I'm going to try to keep some of that, but also take some length off. So we got some good things we can work with to shape it up now. You can see, you already tell like his cowlicks we talked about, his hair's already starting to go this way and this way and this way. So I'm just gonna start here. I'm gonna hold it with the comb. I'm gonna start about that much off. So now I got myself a line to work with and go back with. Just taking all this stuff off. Calyx, you gotta work with them. You know, you can see it's not really cutting the way I want to, so I'm keep going against it and just trying to get him. Get some good length here too. So not to be too cautious. Right, cool. So I can see that the because of the cowlick is kind of flicking out like this. I'm just going to take my uh, this is a Babyliss Pro uh, outliner right now, and I'm just going to kind of hit that edge and just soften it up just a bit. So I lean his head all the way back, and now you can really, really start to see the cowlick. His hair is growing up. His hair is growing sideways. It's going this way, and I'm doing this because now I want to get my lines perfect. I can kind of see because I got the majority of both of my guidelines down. And I'll start to just comb it and let it see what it does naturally. And I'll try to work with that. So that cowlick is in the way. I'm just chopping it right out for him. This is a normal problem I have. I am right handed. So usually my right side will be a little bit higher. So I have to do a little more work on it right now. So I know that the cowlick's doing that, but that cowlick's going straight up. If I pull it down, it's still hidden underneath there. I might just take a little bit more off of it just to make it easier on his life. Pull it down. And this side is still too high. So we're just gonna kind of go in just a little bit at a time and just make sure that we get all that stuff off. Okay, so Law was talking about before, he's not a huge fan of the hard lines going on. He likes to fluff out what we talking about with the white. You like to fluff it out a yeah, bit, Yeah, sometimes. Right? Yeah. Kind of move it around a bit instead yeah. of going straight up and down. So we're going to kind of soften up the tips. We're just going to use our texturizing shears or thinning shears and just get just those tips out just to soften it up even more. Just the tip. So Chris said. Or Charles, that was name? Charles, yeah. They haven't met Charles yet. They haven't met Charles. I think they're gonna meet him soon. Char Charles will be on a video coming to a uh, screen near you soon. So again, his cowlick is pulling it in here. So you gotta pull it out. Am I right? Yeah, both. Mm, both right? Yeah, you better pull out. <laughs> um, both sides definitely are very, are very opposite. different. Very different. That's where the product comes in play. All right. So right now we got a hot towel. 
Is that and what that is? We're just going to put this on log and take your chin up just a bit. Very good. And we're just, is that too hot or anything? Nope. As I put it on your face already. <laughs> <laughs> and this is going to open up all his pores, so it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to shave. So we just took the hot towel off. We're going to put some of the shave gel on. Now, if anyone's curious, we were using the um, Elegance Shaving Gel. They come in a different, bunch of different scents. We use Earth. Earth scent. Earth. And again, we're stretching the skin out. And we're going with the grain as much as possible. Just pretty much finding the line that he's already got. And we're just tapping into that. Again, stretching the skin. Well, you got a lot of hair, man. Yeah. You hairy like animal. Austin Powers, anybody? Yep. Mm -hmm. Correct. Come on, guys. Good talk. So again, he's got a little uh, blemish here, ingrown hair. Is it? So when you when you find these, you just want to go super, super careful around them with the blade because you don't want to irritate it more than it already is. So now we're gonna hit the mustache right now. He's got a pretty good walrus mustache going on right now. And he wants to keep the handlebar mustache when he pulls it out like this. So we're just gonna pull this mustache down a bit. And he wants to take a good amount of off because you can tell right now you're eating it. You know, you probably can't drink a beer or anything like that. If you do want to keep a walrus mustache, the best bet is if you want to drink stuff and you like the way that looks, you gotta start drinking out of straws. Unfortunately, you want to keep the way it looks. Yeah, they got those, assuming you those stash guards they make for the top of your pint. It's kind of like a it's like a lid yeah. with a little hole in it, you know, kind of like a turvis or something like that. You so. probably don't want to carry one of those. No, I don't want to carry that. Exactly. So we're going to take some length off of this now. So we're just pulling it all straight down using our beer brand comb. I'm going to pull it up so we can get the separation in. I'm just going to find a nice little guideline for ourselves, kind of going with the way the mustache is going so we're not taking off too much at the same time. Same thing on the other side. Has it look? We got it out of your mouth a little bit. Yes. We still kept some of the yep, handlebar yep, yep. mustache and everything. And it looks good too. You got it that it's not too short. If I didn't want to twist it up, it's yep. manageable. It looks good. It comes out to the sides. Yep. It's, it's perfect. Good. So it's not too yep. long right so, now. We yeah. get too much of a If I'm in a rush problem. and I don't want to spend five, ten minutes or whatever trying to. If you have a handlebar mustache, you know that it, it takes a little bit of time to get it perfect. Yeah. So this is nice if I'm going to run out of the house or, you know, like I said, I, I tour. Perfect. So if I get off the tour bus in the morning, hey, I don't look nutty. You're happy? I'm happy. I'm happy. All right. <laughs> So now we're just going to put some of the tea tree sea salt spray. We use this pretty much in all our videos right now. Is that focus? Good? Cool. So we can use this. We're just going to spray a good amount in here for him. This doesn't straighten his beard too much, but you do kind of comb it out, right? Yep, yep. So this is going to help you out with that, and you are going to dry it in, too. Right there, just get those cowlicks out of the way, too. Now, it's going to get a little frothy. Sometimes that happens. You can kind of see it working in right now. That's okay, because it's just like the beach. Just like salt water, it's going to get frothy, and that's okay, because it's going to dry out. It's going to give it some good hold, too. It's going to kind of work a little bit into the mustache, too. Now we're going to take a round brush and a blow dryer, medium heat. Just going to work this down. You know that gets too hot, right, Lo? Yep. So now we're going to put a little bit of pomade in his hair, just to finish it off. So we're just going to get a little bit damp. Just work it in there throughout the entire hair, make sure you get the tips and everything. And with law, like we said before, like we talked about when you had this cut, what's great about it, super low maintenance yeah. cut, right? It's up in the air, hard part. If you were in a rush, that's yep. fine, right? Yeah. We're going to give it a little bit of kick here, push it up a little bit. You know, even wetting it with your hands or whatever, just, you know. What do you think, Love? Love it. Yeah? Spot on like always. Awesome, man. Cool. Thanks so much for doing this, man. No, thank you. And thank you from the Dapper Dead. <laughs>
All right, guys, stop. Before you watch our next video, let me tell you, our sea salt spray. This product is amazing for your hair. It gives movable texture. It's like a dry shampoo, so if you go in between days of washing your hair, it'll help your hair extend a little bit longer, and it smells absolutely amazing. Find it over at beardbrand.com.